scenario. Jesse and Enrique open a gym called Gazelles in Bristol. They have four staff members, hire their equipment directly from a manufacturer, and use an outsourced payroll provider. They keep all their member and employee data on cloud storage, with appropriate backups and security. They have read the requirements of the GDPR, and know their obligations to both their members and employees. Please answer the following questions regarding gazelles. The questions test both your knowledge of the GDPR, and your appreciation of how personal data can be used by data controllers and processors. Some questions have a single answer, whereas others require multiple answers to be selected. Feel free to pause the video to think about the question and process it. The answer will be given shortly after. Question 1. Enrique is from Mexico, does the GDPR apply to him? Yes, it applies to everyone no matter where they're from, or where they live. Yes, it applies to anyone who lives in the EEA, regardless of their nationality. No, whilst Enrique lives in the UK, he is not an EU citizen. No, unless he has a UK bank account. The answer is yes, it applies to anyone who lives in the EEA, regardless of their nationality. The GDPR applies to Enrique because he resides in the EEA. The fact he is Mexican is irrelevant. Question 2. Jesse wants to send marketing information to people in the local area. Having analyzed the addresses of the existing membership, she decides on three areas to target, and writes a letter to the newest member of Gazelles, stating that many of their neighbors are also members, the letters are hand-delivered. Is Jesse allowed to market to these people? Yes, Jesse has not identified anyone and the letter is not directly addressed to an individual. Yes, it is acceptable to send marketing materials to anyone, regardless of how the data was obtained. No, she had used personal data to determine who to market to, which is not allowed. No. She has stated that the potential new members' neighbors are members which potentially identifies them, which is not allowed. The answer is yes, Jesse has not identified anyone and the letter is not directly addressed to an individual. The letter is not to an individual nor does it give any information which might identify an individual, so the marketing is allowable. Question 3. Enrique creates a registration form, which collects new members' personal details. He details the information they require and provides two tick boxes. The first indicates that the new member accepts the gym's terms and conditions, the second that indicates they consent to the gym retaining personal details, using them for anonymous analysis of membership agent gender, billing, marketing materials from the gym, the gym to send members details of special events, which of the following are acceptable in this process, the anonymous analysis of membership agent gender providing a single tick box to consent to all the uses, retaining data for billing purposes, sending marketing materials from third parties. The correct answers are, the anonymous analysis of membership age and gender, and, retaining data for billing purposes. The use of anonymous data and retention of billing data are fine, but the gym cannot send data to third parties without the member's consent, and they should have separate tick boxes for each consent requested. Question 4. Enrique outsources the gym's billing and payroll activities to a third party. He tells them what they are allowed to do with the employee and customer data provided, specifically processing employee timesheets and making payments to the employee's bank, managing customer standing orders and collecting payment. The payroll company is a data processor. As such it is not allowed to determine the purpose of processing data. For what reason are they allowed to send tax information to HMRC? Because Enrique forgot to add it to the list of activities. 
because the processing is necessary to fulfill a legal obligation. Because the gym is not registered with HMRC and cannot do this themselves. Because they can only do what they've been asked to do. The answer is yes, because the processing is necessary to fulfill a legal obligation. The payroll provider has a legal obligation to provide the information to HMRC, and they can do this without informing the data subject. Question 5. Jesse has hired the gym equipment from a new manufacturer for a discount, based upon the machines capturing usage data electronically, and sending it to the manufacturer for analysis, so that they can improve the functionality in the future. Which additional data can Jesse send to the manufacturer without needing to ask for the gym member's consent? The number of gym members, the health details of the members, the gender of the gym members, split male and female, the email addresses of the members. The answer is the number of gym members and the gender of the gym members. The number of members and gender are not personal. However, email addresses are personal and health details could identify an individual, so neither can be sent to the manufacturer. Question 6. The gym has an online questionnaire which members complete monthly to assess their progress and determine if there are any changes they would like the gym to make. Some of the data collected is personal. For example name, sex, date of birth, health conditions, the gym members complete the form voluntarily and only after they have joined the gym. What does the gym need to include with the questionnaire? A free gift, a privacy notice, a consent checkbox, a disclaimer saying that they may not act on any suggestions by the member. The answer is, a privacy notice. The gym must supply a privacy notice telling the member what data they are collecting, why, for how long it will be stored, etc. Question 7. A gym member changes the details of their monthly direct debit to the gym. However, the following month the gym member finds that their monthly subscription has been taken from the original account. What right does the member have? To restrict the processing of further data until the issue is resolved, the gym must give them a free year's membership, to have the incorrect data updated, to stop the gym processing payments from any member until the issue is resolved. The answer is to restrict the processing of further data until the issue is resolved, and, to have the incorrect data updated. The member has the right to have their data updated and for the processing to stop whilst this is happening, however, they cannot make further demands of the gym under the GDPR. Question 8. A member asks for a copy of all the data the gym holds about them. They do this each week for three months. Does the gym need to provide the data each time the request is made? Yes, or, no? The answer is, no. The request is allowable but the repeated requests are unreasonable and the gym can refuse to comply. Question 9. Gazelles plan to develop an app that members can use to track their progress by logging into the gym equipment from their phone when they work out. Hardware in the equipment will store this data, and it will be shared with the manufacturer to monitor the equipment. The development team have determined they need to complete a data protection impact assessment. Why have they made this decision? The equipment may be dangerous if the member has not been trained. Data cannot be collected without the member's consent. Data will be moved between different systems, i.e. the app, the member's phone and the manufacturer. The equipment will store member data.
The answer is, data will be moved between different systems, i.e. the app, the member's phone, and the manufacturer, and, the equipment will store member data. Member personal data will be stored and moved, which are risks. Member training does not fall under the GDPR and consent may be required, but is not a reason to do a DPIA. Question 10. The fitness app needs to be secure. Which one of the following criteria should gazelles use to make their decision on the most appropriate security measures? Ask another gym what they use. Decide the app is too risky and stop the project. Choose the most expensive solution. Take the advice of a security expert. The answer is, take the advice of a security expert. When deciding on the security to be used, organizations should choose the solution recommended by experts in the field, which is fit for their project. It is not necessary to use the most expensive solution. Question 11. Gazelles will store their member data in the cloud. The cloud provider is based in the US, and stores their data there. They are a well-known brand, and used by many businesses. What do gazelles need to do to store their data in the US? Ensure the provider is covered by Privacy Shield. Nothing, it is fine to store data in the US. They cannot store data in the US. Nothing, this is a well-known provider used by many UK businesses. Ensure that there are legally binding measures in place to protect the data. The answer is, ensure that there are legally binding measures in place to protect the data. Question 12. Enrique wants to ensure the well-being of the members, so has asked for details of health conditions via a questionnaire. The information will be reviewed by the gym staff, so they are aware of any potential issues when recommending exercises. Which of the following is correct? Enrique can collect the health information because it's a gym. Enrique can collect the health information but needs explicit consent from the members. Enrique can collect the health information but needs a doctor to review it. Enrique cannot collect health information. The answer is, Enrique can collect the health information but needs explicit consent from the members. Enrique can collect the health data but needs explicit consent, which means he will clearly need to tell members what he's collecting, why, how it's kept, for how long and who he'll share it with. Question 13. Gazelles have about 100 members. They hold personal data, including bank details, and the health data for 30 members who use the app. They have six staff, including Jesse and Enrique. Do they need to appoint a data protection officer? No, they don't process enough personal or special category data to need a DPO. Yes, all companies need a DPO. The answer is no, they don't process enough personal or special category data to need a DPO. Companies do not need to appoint a DPO. However, if they process large volumes of data or special category data, they do need a named DPO. Question 14. Due to a system issue, the member's payment details were deleted. All member personal data was backed up on an unprotected USB storage device to guard against such an event. However, after an extensive search the backup device cannot be found. Which one of these actions should gazelles take? Decide it was a data breach and report it to the ICO. Decide it was a data breach but not report it to the ICO. Decide it was a data breach and report it to the ICO and the members. Ask the members for their data again, explaining that the data was lost. The answer is. Decide it was a data breach and report it to the ICO and the members. There are two breaches here. 
first the data was deleted and secondly the backup was lost. This is serious enough to raise to the ICO. In addition, the data could be used to steal from the members, so they need to be informed, so they can take appropriate action. This is the end of the quiz. If you answered correctly to 9 questions or more, congratulations. You have a good knowledge of the GDPR. If you answered wrongly to more than 5 questions, we advise you to view some of the modules again and take the quiz again. Thank you.